Hey everyone, True here and after years of waiting it seems like it's finally time for a new strong dark unit and it is King Arthur. Above average speed at 424, a DPS build in terms of stats and skills to absolutely die for. Let's jump right in. Fittingly for a king she has four active skills that are actually regal skills and the first one is called regal pressure and is actually her only skill that produces spirit. All other skills cost spirit. So regal pressure, 100 time unit skill, and it grants the super poison status to two enemies. And it also adds two Kuromoris to the very end of the allied reinforcements. If there is no Kuromori there already, if there is one, then it only adds one. Super poison deals four times the damage of normal poison and can also defeat a unit like Bright Lancelot. It is a decent skill and it is not random. The poison is not random and I think that helps a lot. She can really put the pressure on some units and they need to purify themselves potentially in time to avoid getting hit by her next skill, which is Regal Fangsbane. And this one costs two spirit, 130 time units and deals 500% damage to two enemies if they are poisoned. Very nice combo between these two. Of course, the time units seem quite long now, but there is some adjustment to that when we go to the passive side, which makes these skills a bit more feasible and much better. Also, if at least one target is poisoned, King Arthur heals for 100% of max HP. Now the next skill is another instant skill and it is called Regal Comet Flare and it has a few different conditions that it can rely on. In general 500% damage to one enemy if they have defeated one or more units with attacks while on the battlefield. If the target has not defeated any units but there are any allied reinforcements instead last unit in the allied reinforcements is sacrificed to still deal 500% damage. So either you have a blood skill or a vengeance skill, both of which deal 500% damage here in the base version. This attack ignores the counter stance status effect and the effects of skin passive skills, which the prior skill Regal Fangspain notably does not. However, the prior skill also relies on enemies being poisoned so there is less chance of them actually having armor, for example, but also having some of the status effects or hold ground that keeps them alive because the poison will take care of that. But coming back to the Regal Comet Flare, this attack ignores these two things. But of course, vengeance or uh, revenge passives are not ignored here. And again, the armor status effect is also not ignored. As it is an instant skill, there is a time lock. In this case, it is 50 time units. After we get to her first passive, you will see that that kind of Regal Comet Flare time lock can combo nicely with the Regal Pressure and you kind of switch back and forth between them potentially, similar to Cinderella and her Survivor Storm Hypnoblast combo. And then we get to her final skill, a skill that is very sure to raise some eyebrows amongst the Avatar community. It is Regal Eclipse, costs three spirit, 100 time units, but what can it do? It immediately defeats one non-boss enemy that has not defeated any units with attacks while on the battlefield. And extremely importantly, this effect ignores any passive skills or effects of active skills that would prevent the target from being defeated and it cannot be redirected by guardians. So any unit that has not defeated any units with attacks while on the battlefield, regardless if they have hold ground plus, hold ground, endure, whatever it is, and even if they are behind guardians, they will be killed by this skill. <laughs> Now, of course, there are some more conditions on this besides uh, the high spirit requirement and the 100 time units. It is only usable if the user has stored three charges, more on that, on the passive side, and it is only usable up to three times per battle. 
and then consumes all the charges on the user. However, one more nice part about this skill is that it also ignores revenge passive skills. So this is basically a complete takeout of a unit. However, that uh, the enemy has not defeated any units with attacks while on the battlefield is a big condition, basically an anti-vengeance skill. And some of the stronger Hold Ground Plus units might not struggle too much with actually getting a kill to be immune to this attack. Also, some other units might not actually mind all that much being defeated because they can be revived or reconjured. But now on to her passives that I have been teasing about a bit already. And the first one is Kingstone. This unit's attack is increased by 50%. Active skill TU costs are reduced by 50%. And there is also 50% permanent damage reduction from attacks. All these effects are only triggered, of course, if this unit begins on the battlefield at the very start of the battle. And it will end if this unit leaves the battlefield. Good thing, though, is at least your allies cannot send her back or away from the battlefield. Some enemy active skills might still be able to do so though. Furthermore, the 50% increase of her attacks is already basically considered an enrage effect, so this does not stack further or higher up. The 1 TU skill, her regal comet flare, will still cost one time unit and she can also not be quickened further after that 50% quicken. So to sum up this passive, she's a super strong starting unit, but she is not immovable. And so there is an obvious kink in her armor that puts an end to that kind of King's Dawn status that helps her so much. And afterwards, her TU, if she doesn't have that kind of King's Dawn effect ongoing, are a bit long, I have to say, with the 100 to 130 TU on most skills. But still, I mean, 750% damage of her main attacks, 50% damage reduction, that is not really an armor that can be taken away or abused by Cinderella. And yeah, the 50 time unit cost or 65 time unit cost of her skills is pretty dope as well. Arguably similarly important or even more important if she's not starting on the battlefield or is being banished or sent back to the reinforcements is the Cursed Hold Ground Plus. Generally it starts out like a normal Hold Ground Plus. If King Arthur would be defeated, she instead survives with 1 HP and then cannot be defeated until her next turn. Afterwards, Hold Ground Plus is gone again. However, she instantly resets it whenever she defeats an enemy with an attack or with the Regal Eclipse. And then she is also healed for 100% of max HP. And yeah, Hold Ground Plus can trigger again. The other side of this passive is her charge mechanic, which is only important for the Regal Eclipse skill. And getting charges is not super easy, I would say. Only whenever a non-conjured enemy on the battlefield is defeated or sacrificed by any source, this unit gains one charge. So three non-conjured enemies have to die to actually unlock the Regal Eclipse skill. She also loses these charges when she leaves the battlefield. So then she needs to start collecting them again if she re-enters. So all in all, a super strong unit, of course. The strongest dark unit ever released to Evertail, however, this threshold isn't super high right now. Technically, she is a poison blood unit, but it's not really a strong focus of her skill set, I would say. It will be interesting to see if she can carry up some of the other units that are in this fashion. She isn't really as strong synergetically, <laughs> if that is a real word as someone like Commander Astrid was with Burn, so I'm not sure if she will have quite that lifting up effect. Uh, she's probably gonna be used with some other strong new units, especially because she is a bit of a spirit drain and uh, newer units usually recently have 
not been that way and have been quite strong spirit producers actually. Yes, the Regal Eclipse is something that was never seen before in the game. Until now there was no way to defeat Hold Ground plus units before they actually get the turn. Maybe they are asleep or whatever, can be defeated afterwards. But at least you had the guarantee that they would get the turn. This guarantee no longer exists. However, it is nerfed by that kind of condition of the enemy not having killed anyone else already. Also, the charge mechanic is quite limiting to this, of course. If she starts on the battlefield and is not banished or pushed back to the reinforcements, then she will be quite a hefty starter. But um, there are units that can obviously put an end to this and her hate might be quite high, which means she will likely be the target of something like this. But more on this on the weekend when I release my extensive review on her, including the AI analysis and my tier prediction. Special thanks to Saturn and Lance GS for the materials used in this video. I'll try to deliver you some great top level arena footage of King Arthur as quickly as possible. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to like and subscribe to become a true carrot. And as always, thanks for watching.